And remember to like our page KBN TV on Facebook for all breaking news. KBN, the finest television. For the most accurate and balanced news, we are a credible and trusted news source. We are KBN Television. Catch us live on Top Star Channel 102. And remember to like our page KBN TV on Facebook for all breaking news. KBN, the finest television. For the most accurate and balanced news, we are a credible and trusted news source. Very good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us to present the lunchtime news at 13 hours on the finest television. I'm Petty Chanda. The headlines. Government alerts Zambians on visiting SA. Garden Township residents call on government to reopen schools. In foreign news, Argentina breaches 100,000 COVID dates amid deepening crisis. And other news in detail. The Zambian High Commission in South Africa has advised Zambian nationals to exercise caution as they visit that country in light of the ongoing unrest. Zambia's High Commissioner to South Africa, Major General Jackson Miti, says Zambians who are considering traveling to KwaZulu Natal and Houghton provinces should avoid doing so until the unrest in some towns of these provinces comes to an end. He advised truck drivers intending to travel to the coastal city of Durban in KwaZulu Natal to reschedule their plans as most parts of the entry. Road, the main road to the city is still closed following the continued unrest that has flared up in the past few days. General Miti further advised cross border traders who are planning to travel to the commercial city of Johannesburg to equally reschedule their plans as most shops have been closed due to the continued protests. He added that the High Commission would continue monitoring the situation and advise Zambian travelers for their safety. Socialist Party spokesperson Riho Both Kafabulula says the party has zero tolerance to political violence as the country heads to the polls this August. She says young people should not be used as tools of violence and should therefore treat political violence with the contempt it deserves. Kafabulula has since called on the police to be cautious and ensure peace is achieved in various constituencies, especially during the campaigns. Um, as an organization, as the Socialist Party, We've always had a zero tolerance policy when it comes to things to do with political violence. 50% um, of our candidates are women, the great majority of them are youth, some of them um, are as young as 21. We envision a Zambia where young people will be you know, leaders in this country, where young people are not going to be used as tools for political violence. And we hope that instead of always condemning Carders uh, who commit atrocities in our communities and in our constituencies. We hope that um, during this election, especially, we'll treat political violence with the content that it deserves, that we'll simply treat it as violence, and we'll simply treat those who commit acts of violence as what they are, which is, you know, criminals. We hope that the police will maintain vigilance um, and that there will be peace in our constituencies and in our communities as well. Okay. Lusaka's Garden Rwangwa residents have expressed concern over the unproductive behavior of most children in the area, which comes after the closure of schools. Parents talked to narrated that the closure of schools has led youths in the area to be exposed to bad vices such as smoking, drinking, and getting in a premature sexual relationships. Parents have called on government to consider the reopening of schools, stating that ev not everyone is managing to keep their children home. We have more in the following report. Wangwa residents in Lusaka have expressed concern over the unproductive behavior of most children in the area, which has come after the closure of schools. Parents talked to have narrated this. <laughs> Manja <laughs> 
and they have since called upon government to reconsider the reopening of schools. Benitia Mumba reporting for KBNT. And finally, in foreign news, Argentina has become the fifth country in Latin America to surpass 100,000 deaths linked to COVID-19 as the country suffers a surge in coronavirus cases that have strained its healthcare network and worsened an already dear economic crisis. On Wednesday, the Argentina Health Ministry said that the country registered 614 new deaths during the last 24 hours. It has now reported 100,050 to 50 coronavirus states and 4.7 million cases since the pandemic began, according to Johns Hopkins University data. Argentina has been one of the hardest hit countries in Latin America, but daily average cases have fallen since a peak last month and ICU bed occupancy is coming down, although still about 60% nationwide. The head of the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, Carissa Etienne, warned on Wednesday that infections are once again mounting in the country. Sandra del Valle Pereira is trying to recover from the loss of her parents. They both died of COVID-19. It is very hard. I've been left alone. My siblings live in different places. First my mother died and then my father. I don't know what to feel any more about this terrible disease. Argentina has reached the grim milestone of 100,000 COVID-19 deaths. It's one of the hardest hit nations in the region, even though daily average case numbers have fallen since the peak last month. So far, fewer than 10% of the country's 45 million people have been inoculated with two doses, but an increase in vaccination in the past month is raising hope the country will be able to control the pandemic. Every life that has gone is a great regret for me. To those who have lost a loved one, you'll always find solidarity, love and regret for what you have had to live. But I can guarantee you that the exit door is near. We're not going to stop in these months vaccinating each and every Argentine man and woman. But it's also the associated economic crisis that has people here extremely concerned. Poverty rates and unemployment have soared amid COVID and the country's battle with chronic long-term economic difficulties. It's not just the pandemic drowning us in this country. There's also the huge economic crisis. Many relatives call us crying, not only because of the death, but because they don't have the money to bury their loved ones. We have to act as psychologists to these people. Argentina was one of the first countries in the region to impose strict lockdown measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And thanks to that, experts say the healthcare system survived. Earlier this year, the government reimposed some of those strict lockdown measures in an attempt to control the virus variants. Many of those restrictions have now been suspended, but the government maintains controls at the border and at the airport where only a few flights for... And that international news brings us to the end of lunchtime news on the finest television. But before we go, a recap of the headlines once again. Government alerts Zambians on a visiting SA. Garden Township residents call on government to reopen schools. And in foreign news, Argentina breaches 100,000 COVID dates amid a deepening crisis. This has been Petit Chanda saying, see you later at 1930. Good afternoon.